And so we've got him here today to uh, just, you know, give us a little more info. What is Tree Sitter? Why is it something that we think is fun and cool to include inside of NeoVim? You know, some of the, his favorite features maybe, and then, you know, sort of our vision and roadmap for, you know, what someday we hope hope to accomplish with Tree Sitter. Uh, no promises on timelines, of course. As, as everyone is aware in the NeoVim community, um, <laughs> We uh, yeah. we want to make sure it's we want to make sure it's right, not that we get it out fast. So so, anyways, <laughs> uh, Vigu, go ahead. Maybe you want to give us a little about yourself and just uh, tell us a little yeah. bit about Tree Sitter. Uh, there's not that much things to say. I mean, I'm the I, I've been I've become the Tree Sitter guy, <laughs> in a, 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 I'm not the Tree Sitter guy because we are actually a team. So I mean, big up to the team. We mm -hmm. are quite a bunch of people. But yeah. I mean, Tree Center, I've been contributing for, to any of them for one year and a half now. I think so. Member of the core team for one year. And uh, yeah, maintaining Tree Center stuff. Uh, maintaining the part of NeoVim that handles Tree Center because that's two things. And now we're, we're going to talk about that later. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, really glad to be here. Really glad to be in the team. Really glad to be, I mean, discussing with you is, is just thrilling give it time. Cool. So thanks. Yeah, so just give us like a brief summary of what is Tree Sitter first, just as a technology, sort of separate from NeoVim. Yeah, okay, so so Tree Sitter is is it's actually a big name hiding three thing, three different things. There is one thing which is the library, which we we call the runtime. It's like kind of big generic things. I mean, I, I will start by the beginning. Tracer is what we call a parsing library. What we do is that you take random text that actually corresponds to your language <laughs> and you output what the text means in terms of how it's written, I mean, the syntax. Mm -hmm. Like when you write phrases and see what in, what's inside of it, what it contains and descent like this, like kind of the generic meaning, that's parsing. What Tracer does, and which is specific to Tracer, is that it does this parsing that, that's correspondence from raw text to what we call the syntax tree incrementally. That is, when you edit a range of text on the, on the buffer, on the input, mm -hmm. it just edits in the syntax tree rapidly. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's cool because when you edit text, you actually do small changes and you don't want to repass the whole things from beginning to end. You just want to edit the little thing. I mean, I, I, that's something that sounds dumb, but that actually what most IDEs today do, they just repass the whole buffer from top to bottom and output a new tree. And I'm not talking about how Vim does it. I mean, the <laughs> built-in the, the built way to do it, which is a whole another thing, which is different, but, but basically that's this. What, how we do it now is, so there is this runtime library, which is just basic things that you, that are generic on the language that you want to pass. And there is parser. Parser are, are like the, the thing that will do these text to syntax tree conversion. Mm -hmm. They are small, I mean, fairly small things specific to one language. There is one parser for C, then one parser for JavaScript. That I mean, no, no, no rant about that today. But, <laughs> but you, you know what I'm, what I mean. Yeah, we all have there opinions is, about JavaScript. I think it's a requirement. <laughs> yeah, you, you must have some. But, so that's the thing that we use in NeoVim. Mm -hmm. We have the runtime, which is the thing we package with NeoVim actually, and the parsers that you have to install on the on another another way. Mm -hmm. Just like LSPs actually. Yep. There is the LSP client that you will be using in, in NeoVim O.5s, which will be awesome, I, I guarantee you. <laughs> <clears throat> and there is the LSPs, the servers that you install and that you that they interact with inter between them. Awesome. And then maybe we should just briefly mention, I think one of the really cool aspects of it as well is uh, just the query system, the way that yeah. we can interact with the tree. So that's an awesome thing, but that's actually something that I think is implemented on other parsing libraries. Hmm. But what <laughs> we can do is do some pattern, pattern matching on the tree. Basically, you want to, uh, you want to say, 
I want to get the function definition of my file. Yep. If you do it the regex way, you'll write a long regex <laughs> capturing the whole line of the function definition. If you have luck, there will be only function definitions on one line. Yep. But you have some strange coding style will be like multi-line and such. Mm -hmm. But with Tracer, all of this is gone. What you do is you do the parsing and you do some pattern matching on the on the input on the tree itself. And mm -hmm. then you get the text that corresponds to it. And from that, I mean everything is possible. You want you want to have the list of arguments of function B, then you go, you pattern matching on it, and that's done. Yeah, and, I think one thing that's cool thing. about that too is because we have the text and the ranges inside of you know NeoVim, it unlocks a lot of really cool stuff. Like if you're interested, I've done some stuff as well using some of the NVIM Treesitter modules, like moving arguments around. So instead of having to build a million different regexes for every language yeah. to figure out how to figure out if something's an argument or not you can actually just say actually i've got a list of them and i know that it starts from here to here and this one starts from here to here let's just do this that's very yeah. i think it unlocks you know that sort of next level of structural editing right i think that's one yeah. of your favorite words for Exa Tracer. exactly and i'm going to talk about it now <laughs> because the the most powerful thing i mean we can do highlighting because as long as you you have the tree you can say i have a keyword there and i want to highlight it this yep. way so that's the cool thing but not the real cool thing mm -hmm. the real cool thing is what you and we call structural identity so you have the tree and you have to know one thing is when you write code you write it structurally Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't like edit random text and paste. And I mean, if you do that, I mean, <laughs> even if you that's a separate it from problem. Stack Overflow, it's still not random. <laughs> yeah, it's not random. And and structural editing is the way. It's like the generic way of editing things. I mean, let's say you want to to rename a variable. You don't want to go and find the instance where you re rewrote it. I mean, it could be anything, actually. It could mm -hmm. be in a comment. It could be anywhere else. Yep. And what we can do with Tracer today, and I, I'm actually using it every day at work, is you select everything, every single identifier, let's say, that's that's like viable names and such, and you replace them by some something. Mm -hmm. There is a plugin for that, uh, a random, <laughs> set, <laughs> shameless plug, but it's... And, and we can do do actually awesome things. And mm -hmm. and you actually realize that the question that strikes after that is why didn't I do that earlier? Why mm -hmm. was it not like this before? Because you do it. I mean, our brain as programmers work when we write code in a tree. Mm -hmm. There is functions, there is variable in the functions, there is if, else's, <laughs> loops conditioners and such. I mean, that's how it works. And having a tool that maps this, it just reduces the travel between what you have in your head and what you're actually writing. And that's important. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a really, you know, really powerful thing. And uh, especially for NeoVim, you know, turning it to a little bit, thinking about NeoVim, I think one of my favorite features about it, right, is that like you can keep on sort of like using each part of the editor within itself and using it again and figuring out, oh, okay, so now I understand, you know, how we're gonna build this tree and now we have a highlight. Well, okay, what if I also wanna do folding or I also wanna do text objects or we can sort of power a bunch of these things that have been like a long time part of, you know, the Vim family of editors, right? We can actually package those up now and use them to like, power uh the stuff that we've been doing before you know like move to next function or switch functions is f i'm very this is this is my favorite part you know about tracer yeah. obviously it's cool to get good highlights and that's the first thing i think <laughs> people think of but uh you know our long-term vision includes much more than just uh just highlighting I, I would even go further and say the the much longer vision is to do what uh, Vim built-in syntax engine does not do. Right. It's like actually knowing the language and helping you, the programmer, do your thing and mm -hmm. not struggling because you are editing some random things. That's what we want to do. And, and every tool along the way is just being implemented 
today. Mm -hmm. Text objects, highlighting, folding, yep. uh, variable renaming, you name it, actually. There is a whole bunch of it. I, I don't actually I don't even have the full lists because right. there are so many people actually working on, working on it. We can even imagine things like uh, get me the scope list for, on, on which I am mm -hmm. to help you understand that extracting tags. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things. Yeah, I and, generate uh, all the help documentation for like telescope yeah, and other uh, things using the tree sitter, Lua, grammar plus queries yeah. plus an output. You know what I mean? So I think Com completely random thought yeah. that you put there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, it works though already, you know, so it's, yeah. it's pretty exciting. But, so I, yeah, go ahead. That, no, sorry. That, that's just one. What I want to push mm -hmm. is that we are actually building something new mm -hmm. using using a tool that was built and designed and optimized for text editors yeah and not some regexes that she pass all over the file mm -hmm. i mean we already have proof today with a pretty silly implementation that we have today for tracer and and some performance things that we need to have to optimize mm -hmm. that we are better on some aspects than what Finn does today after like years and years of de development. Right. I mean, we benefit from it already, and everybody mm -hmm. could benefit from it. And it will be, it's, it's, it will not be today, <laughs> that's for sure. Right. But think in like medium term. Yep. Yeah, I think the other thing too for me that's quite exciting about Tree Sitter is um, when we're building these features, they're so much more reliable than they were from yeah. regexes. And I find, even if like I had a regex that worked, you know, 90% of the time when I'm editing C files or something like that, right? That 10% of the time causes me to like never want to use it again because I'm like in pure agony when it failed and my file's broken and like I don't know what's happening anymore, you know? So I think um, there's sort of that level of reliability that we hopefully, you know, can keep on working towards and building that makes things really, really exciting from the tree sitter side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, there is a quite a bit of chance that it will be faster. Yes. I do like that we, as we well. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that was my wow moment. Yeah. When I realized first, it, it's cool. I mean, it's yeah. cool to see. <laughs> it, it's cool to see work in. You edit the thing, it, it moves on the other end and you see, mm -hmm. okay, it, it's ju it just works. Okay. Yeah. And the second thing is, is to realize the moment you realize it's actually faster. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to think, okay, I'm doing more powerful things faster. I mean, that, that's just, just, that's just my way of, of thinking about Veeam and NeoVim. That's yeah. just how we do it. You yep. just do more powerful things faster. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like, I really like that. I do want to make sure we uh, bring up, just because I know that as people are seeing the 0 0.5 release, they're reading a list of features that are going to read LSP and they're going to read tree sitter beta, just to be clear, right? We're reminding everybody that we're still, you know, we haven't committed to every API and we want to make sure we end up with the right decisions long term. Can you give just like a little brief you know, sort of compare contrast between tree sitter and LSP for people who aren't as familiar with both texts? Yeah, that's the question I um, I have the most rehearsal on. <laughs> that's the most que the question we have the most these days. Mm -hmm. So as we said earlier, TreeSitter takes an input text and it outputs a syntax tree. Mm -hmm. So it works on the file level. You you only have trees for one file. Mm -hmm. That's just how it go it goes. So you work, but you will go you will do it really fast. Mm -hmm. You will just operate on one file and go to the other one, for example. Mm -hmm. That's really fast and the scope of the file. Yep. LSP is just the other part of the thing. You have you need to handle a project. So you will mm -hmm. you are going to do analysis project wise. Yep. But there is many files, there is dependencies, mm -hmm. there is things and things and things. So it will take time. And that's the time you don't want to waste. I mean if you write things, if every time you wait like a millisecond just to have one letter highlighted, mm -hmm. you will be bored really fast. Even <laughs> if it's, I mean, a millisecond, I'm, I'm doing too much, but like a yeah. hundred millisecond. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. LSP is doing project wise. So in, in the most part, more powerful and powerful, I mean, 
uh, resolving dependencies and such. Right, like a rename but, across so, your yeah. whole project, right, is what LSP yeah. would do. But in general, we don't try and accomplish something like that with TreeSitter. Exactly, yeah. and mm -hmm. because it will be, I will say slower. Yeah. Because there is more things to do. Right. But it may be, yeah, I mean, that's the way. TreeSitter is for files, yeah. LSP for projects, that's the way mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is LSP has to communicate over some protocol, right? So in general, yep. we're sending some JSON blob between the two things and doing all this stuff, right? Which like may not be that fast for highlighting a huge file, <laughs> right? So if every highlight were applied via some JSON blob as opposed to an in-process, very fast uh, application of the highlights, you could experience a lot of pain. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and I was going to say it earlier too. It's optimized for uh, what we do is, is that editing. Mm -hmm. So for LSP, I'm not I'm not an LSP expert. You are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> for LSP, you will have to query the whole highlighting for the whole buffer mm -hmm. and re-highlight it. I'm I'm pretty sure there is some incremental things that you can do. But yeah, I'm not sure. But LSP, but three zero. Sorry, mm -hmm. you will hit one letter. It will be inserted repass the whole thing and re-highlight, I mean, not the whole thing, but repass just a little bit that mm -hmm. you need to repass yep. to have this letter Yeah. and re-highlight just this letter. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's just one millisecond. I'm not, right. not joking, less than a millisecond. Yeah, right. And that's, you know, it's like you said, it's a tool exactly designed to like tackle that problem, which is why we want to use that tool for this problem, right? And I think that yeah, that's exactly. a really powerful powerful aspect of that yeah uh, you have one two that do one thing and do it well i mean yep. that's the yeah what we think yeah <clears throat> another question that i think people often ask is like okay so i understand sort of the difference between lsp and tree sitter what is happening with like you know we said that tree sitters in neovim core but there's also this separate envim tree sitter repo can you sort of just explain what's going on there and give people some information about that yeah so Actually, when we talked about like the first question, what is tree sitter? There is a yep. difference between the runtime, mm -hmm. which is the thing that that is intent independent from the languages and the process, and the parses, and like language specific things. This is actually exactly that, plus a little more things mm -hmm. because I mean we like doing more things. Yep. But in core today, there is just what is necessary to have you install your parses. And it just runs the very basic things, mm -hmm. and and just as a proof of concept, highlighting because we we liked it. Mm -hmm. It just does the very basic things. You won't have anything else than just you install you install the parses, parses and it does this incremental parsing things. Mm -hmm. And film tracer on the other end, it handles all the heavyweight configuration of each process, uh, actually some extra things like features that NVIM doesn't have. Mm -hmm. But but like the whole language specific things are mainly in, in NVIM Tracer, mm -hmm. while NVIM itself just, I mean, just packages <laughs> the runtime and, and the glue code necessary to be called from Lua because that's the thing with Auto 5 now, we do everything in Lua. Yeah, I think, um, so like just for people who aren't as familiar, there's a bunch of code that's written in C that needs to be compiled into NeoVim to like do anything with the tree and get the corresponding updates at the right times and replace highlights, and, you know, all these kinds of things. And some of that has changed over time and it's become more, you know, agnostic to what's happening inside of NeoVim as we're sort of working towards stabilizing everything. But that kind of stuff not only like it just like can't live in a plugin that part has to be in neovim core and that's sort of like the tree sitter parts and i think um would you say like would you say a long-term goal is like that some of the features or aspects that are currently in envim tree sitter would get moved into neovim core uh yes definitely uh, there is actually a bunch of things that we want to move in NeoVim core, mm -hmm. like some tree analysis things. I mean, mm -hmm. the basic things, we have some folding text objects and such. That's most likely going to stay in Android Tracer. Uh, 
but things like tree analysis and heavyweight things that mm-hmm. many people may want to 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 have it will be moved to in, to neovim core cool. just like lsp actually yep things that everybody wants we move it to NVIM. Yep. other things we keep it ourselves i yeah. mean in a plugin not ourselves right yeah we share Avail- <laughs> right available to everyone to download so so that's i think i think that's a good answer and helps people see you know like the core part of tree sitter is being implemented in neovim and we're working on making sure that that's stable and makes sense we all agree and we can do a bit more experimentation and things outside in nvim tree sitter organization so any other things that you're interested to say about tree sitter or the roadmap or anything i'm not sure um let me think about um yeah we <clears throat> we will be I will ans- answer the thing that everybody wants <laughs> after asking for LSB against Tracer <laughs> is how it integrates with built-in Vim of, mm. of doing things. Yeah. What we actually want is not to replace it because mm-hmm. we can't support as many languages as right. they do. Mm-hmm. But for most languages, we want to be able to have a huge portion of it just available. Like, yeah. yeah uh, cool text object code folding highlighting mm-hmm. it would be just supported right away in neovim not mm-hmm. today not tomorrow that's for sure but <laughs> <clears throat> but for 0.6 we want to be able to do at least a bit of things for some languages built in cool at least i, I will i will dump it <laughs> yeah. not for all that six for sure mm-hmm. but at least vimo lua and c will be supported out of the box that's pretty sure yeah i think um that's definitely one of my goals as well as as we've talked about before i want to make it so that you know when you open up neovim for the first time and you start writing some lua or you start writing some Vimo, you get the world-class experience for those things because i think that really makes it a lot easier for people as they're you know assuming that you turned on the features we're not going to make anybody <laughs> use anything right but assuming you would like the features on uh, that you get that experience right away to help new people get started and to help you know experienced people to continue to work productively. I think that's and that's what TreeSitter I think as well as some of the other features uh, that NeoVim05 is starting to ship. I think that's what it can start to provide. Yeah, and and I think that goes with there was this talk from Justin McKees, which yeah. is the maintainer, which. I don't know if you saw it, and yep. but um, I recommend it, which is called We Can Have Nice, th- nice Things. Yep. And 0.5 is the first step to this mindset, which is, you know what FIM does? We can do more than things that while keeping what FIM does today. And, and right. that's, Treather is part of it, LSB is part of it, and a huge bunch of, of development is done in this way. Yeah. So that's the near of a mindset that day yeah I'd say. totally i uh i super agree we can have nice things and, and tree sitter's one of them all right hey thanks vegan yeah. thanks for talking and we really appreciate thanks, it thanks for the talk yeah yeah okay hello everybody big shout out to vigu Awesome, awesome work. We love Vigu. We love Vigu. Yes, we do. Uh, maybe I need to just mute these notifications right now, honestly. Properties. Uh, we'll do this. We'll do this. I'm just going to mute notifications for a while. I probably should have done that at the beginning. Whatever. Okay, cool. Uh, anyways, uh, any questions about TreeSitter? Anything Anything that uh, people are interested in knowing? Can TreeSitter act as a parser for an LSP server? Uh, it could, sure, but you'll need to still do a lot of other things around it. So like LSP is just a communication protocol, right? So it can communicate uh, like just with JSON. And so you could power LSP with whatever you wanted. Tree sitter could be something that you do that with, and it could be quite good. My favorite tree sitter plugin is the one that we already mentioned, which is uh, NVIM tree sitter text objects. Um, because I just think it's so cool. Uh, I guess I can, I'll just close out of this. Uh, and let's do, I'll just do an example of something, I guess. Uh, showing chat live, which is dumb.go. Let's say I have a funk, like, 
uh, ASDF and you have, you know, X int Y int like this. So this will let you do cool stuff like, um, oh, I pressed the wrong button. Shoot, what did I actually even, uh, what did I even, oh no, I already forgot what it is. Oh, what are my mappings? <laughs> Shoot. This is why you don't do live things. Oh, space and backspace, right. I changed this recently. So see how we switched where this one was, this Y and X? Maybe I'll do this one string so it's more obvious. Um, space back here, uh, backspace this. So I can move it forward and I can move it back. That's done with tree sitter, for example. Um, no, I just choked pretty much, that's all. And it can do other very cool things like uh, this one. If I do something like space backspace F, I can actually switch these functions. So it understands what the things are at a syntactic level, right? And it lets me literally switch things around, swap. Uh, it's for every language or just go. Uh, it works for every language that the queries are defined for. So I just used go because I know that it works because I just used it recently. It moves, I can make it move forward. Uh, so that, whoops, this is forward. And then I can make it move uh, backward. Whoops, uh, back to my stuff, there we go. So I think, so I don't know, does that, that answer your question? So that's why it's like one of my favorite ones. It does other stuff cool like um, you can move between functions and that's with tree sitter queries basically. Is there a map for adding an argument? Uh, not that I know of. Ah, uh, yes, the envim tree sitter subjects one is interesting as well. This moves the whole function multi-line. Yep, so if I had, um, you know, like uh, another, right, like this, and I'm inside of here. I guess I don't remember if it does this. Yeah, so it just works. I'm inside of here. I can move it. I just, oh, I want to move this. Okay, uh, let's, I can just move that function. So it understands that at a, like, larger, higher level, right? You can also select with that plugin. Yeah, so I could do like uh, VAF and it'll select the, it'll select this. I don't think it supports ranges as of this time. Uh, but there's like, that's, there's improvements that can be done, but it just starts showing the, the, is this implemented for Python? Yeah, it's implemented for every language that one, has a tree sitter grammar and two, has the associated queries. So this would work for any, any language that has both of those things. Does that make sense? So you can you can literally just do this anytime. That's with native tree sitter or plugin. So it's using tree sitter to do it, but there's stuff written on top of tree sitter. Tree sitter is just the library that's basically doing the thing, right? Does that make sense? Um, is tree sitter factor? No, this is tree sitter text objects. Basically, every language that I want to use has to clear some config for it. No, 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 no. Every language that you want to use has to have an implementation. Every language you use has to have an implementation. Uh, so there's no, sp I can show you um, here, like the config for this, I have uh, somewhere down here, like move. This is how I move between things. So I can do bracket M to move to the next function and then bracket capital M to move to the pre uh, previous function. Whoops. Uh, am I doing the right thing? There we go. Yeah. So you can do this, but these two things, uh, like this is the same for every language. They just have to have the grammar and things like that to do it. Okay, does that make, I don't know if that makes sense. We can talk about this more at like a different time set. Yeah, so that when you're, so if I move here and I go backwards M to go to the beginning of this function, I could press control N, control O, and I go back to where I was inside of here. It's a uh, tree sitter text objects, tree sitter text objects, this plugin. So it's built on top of tree sitter. So then this would be the same for every language and it understands it not via regexes, but via the grammar. Does that make sense? Chat. Um, so anyways, it, this is just an example. This is just an example of the kind of power that tree sitter unlocks um, to understand the code as more than just text. And you can combine this with the ideas of NeoVim generally. That's a great point, Rocker. Let's do that. So you can actually do this, 
tree sitter playground, this shows you the actual tree that's going on. So if I were to click here, see how this function declaration and this function declaration, they work like this. If I change this to say error, now it says, hey, look, uh, you have a result and it's a type identifier. Then I could do something like uh, return nil. Now it knows that there's a return expression list nil. So all these things are, this is what tree sitter sees when it looks at this file. This is just an example, we can do 100x more. Uh, Justin maintains his Twitter, so maybe we'll tweet about it later today. Jumping function is great, very fast, super awesome. It does lots of really great things. Um, yeah, so I'm not doing the NeoVim05 account. I wasn't. I wish that I had thought of it. I wish that I would have thought of it, but I didn't. How hard would it be to implement extract an expression to a global variable? Um, it might not be that hard. I'll give you a, I'll give you a very cool, ex uh, cool example. At least I think it's cool. So I use Lewis snips. There's uh, learning how to take advantage of these tree sitter features, reading the help. And if that's not good enough, then you should make the help better as you figure it out. So I've got um, G uh, I uh, shoot. What did I call this one as well? I got. I just started using some of these, so I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do this. EFI, right? right. Uh, which one is the one that I like? Okay, EFI. So if I do this, notice what happened. I just expanded out a snippet to call a function. This is the return value of this function. So I can just say, you know, like my int air. I can change the name of this air, for example, like um, funk air. See it uh, expanded out to these. These all changed. Then I could say something like, yo, this funk. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Yo, this. Uh, funk. I actually don't know if this will work now. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, the cool part for tree sitter, anyways, just like Copilot, the cool part about this is that it uses tree sitter to figure out what these functions are or what the return type is. See how this is in result parameter list? Has result parameter list. It actually returns the default for each of these functions. So I don't know if uh, it'll let me try again. Uh, actually, let's do it like this. Let's change this one to a bool. And then we'll add an int here like this. And if I do the same thing, whoops. See how it did false, error, and zero? It literally knows what's up here via tree sitter running in my, in my expanded thing. And that grabs what those are and gives you the answer. It can even be cooler than this because you could do something like this. X is funk and this funk, whoops. Funk uh, returns, let's just say error only, uh, like this. Or we'll just say int error, okay? Like this, right? And if I expand inside of here, look at this. It knows that this is the function that I'm inside because it's tree sitter. So it only does this as the return type instead of these three values. Okay, you guys see that? So this is sort of the interesting things that I think can be explored with tree sitter as time goes on. Um, where because it's all Lua and it's all running here and you have access to all the APIs, you can just start doing like crazy, crazy stuff, right? It knows that this is an inline function with this return type, so that's what it does. Okay, chat, is, uh, is that, does that all make sense? Is that good? It's fast, yes. TJ can't handle this my boy stuff. <laughs> But made it as much. Wow, can you share that EFI thing? Yeah, it's in my it's in my dot files. Uh, I I can go over it on a different stream because I really want to get Justin on here. Are you getting snippets and vim to insert in the same buffer instead of floaty? I don't use snippets and vim anymore. I use Lua snip. So the advantage of doing things like this with tree sitter and full SP is speed. So there's a couple things. Tree sitter gives you access to the whole tree. There's no way to even ask LSP what is the current return type of the function that my cursor is in. That does, that's not a question that you can ask to LSP. But to tree sitter, I can ask what the return type of a function is because I can write a query that will give me that value. So you can't do that in LSP. There's no way to ask that question currently. Maybe in the future there would be. But this also runs in process. There's no server to communicate to, no environment to set up. I'm actually not even running go please right now in this buffer, okay? This go please is not attached to this buffer because it's just a random go file. So this works whether your project is a billion lines or not even in a project is all. Tree sitter is per file. Tree sitter and LSP do not talk to each other generally. 
Okay, they don't generally talk to each other at all. Go PLS, it's the language server. Go please, I always call it go please. Yes, I'm literally using it right now for Snippets plugins. And there's like a bunch, there's like a billion other, other things that we could do with it. People stealing our karma, so true, MJ, so true. Yes, we don't control the PPA. You guys don't ask us about the PPA, that's not, that's not us. So we'd be able to replace Go import. Uh, I wouldn't use it to replace Go imports. Go imports runs, you would want to use Go please for that. Does this tree or not have problems with language complicated syntax? It does. It does have complications with the syntax, uh, but someone just needs to write a better grammar. And then it works. Um, I don't know. Any, we can, I can answer a few more questions about uh, this, and then I'll see if Justin's about ready to hop on. And then we can, we'll chat with Justin for a bit. Playground looks amazing for debugging. Does it show errors? Yeah, so if you did something like this... It should say error somewhere. Uh, is this a valid thing? Oh, it just thinks that it's an identifier. Yeah, so here you go. So here's an error inside of here. See, this is not valid, so it puts error. Does it do global renaming this function in the project? No, whenever you ask a question, does tree sitter do X and X includes global the answer is pretty the answer is no. We do support um, embedded embedded languages. I'll give you an example of that as well. Um, oops, that's not the button I meant to press. Uh, temp uh, example FFI Lua dot Lua. So if you do something like this, local FFI is require FFI, oops, and then you do FFI.cdef inside of this function, or inside of this string there should be C code. So void main uh, int x is one. This is C highlighting inside of here. It's embedded inside of here. So it can understand that and do a lot of really cool things. Pick, you missed it, we already released it. Writing grammars is forgotten while writing creases for mortals. Uh, it can happen that way, it, it takes, it takes it uh, has to do other things. How does it handle split files, which import other parts from other files? Uh, it has queries that can determine when it should be imported, but we are working on ways to make this faster and better. The repo of default sims for Lewis Snip, not that I know of. Can TreeSitter save my marriage? If your marriage is plagued by having to rewrite many common utilities between multiple languages and it creates a lot of difficulties for you and your family, then possibly yes. But otherwise I'd say unlikely. That'd be the only scenario where I think, well, maybe it really could save your marriage. I uh, was literally wondering when's your final release and saw it was today. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> how difficult is to write the grammar depends a lot on how complex the syntax is. Yep, 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 yep. Where does the name tree sitter come from? Because uh, if you think about this, uh, TS Playground, this is a tree and this sits on top of the tree. So it's like there's a tree of the code, the syntax tree. I think it's just a meme. I think it's just a meme about it. Uh, how resilient is it to broken syntax? That's literally one of the best parts about it. Notice here that this is an error. This code right here is an error. This does not work in Go, but nothing else is broken and it's highlighting because TreeSitter understands how to attempt to best highlight things. See how this is like closed and there's like broken brackets and stuff? TreeSitter understands and tries to gracefully recover. That's one of the best benefits about it. You don't even have to write that inside of the grammar when you make it. That's one of the best parts about TreeSitter. Is auto import possible with TreeSitter? Uh, maybe for things where you have a, um, a very simple way of doing the imports, like you import from this package and the package is the thing you import, it might work, but I think generally no, that's better for LSP. Uh, yes, we can. We could do something like that, Timsicle. You could. You could add that. This is so cool. Auto imports with LSP. Yeah, I would use LSP. Once again, that's sort of like an LSP thing that seems better. Head is almost always more stable than release. It's true. Don't sit on trees. Yeah, I'm not advocating for sitting on trees. That does seem like a dangerous plan. That will look really nice with styled components. Yeah, I'll give you another cool example of what it can do. There's a cool, uh, oh, I think I, I can actually just show this one. And then TS comment context string. I don't have to actually try and do this myself, which is good. Uh, this is a cool plugin 
that changes the comment string based on where you are in a file. So because JavaScript land just said, what if we just write all the, all the things in one file, which seems kind of weird. There's like eight different ways to comment. So this changes the comment string based on where you are. So when you do your normal commenting, it'll just automatically change to the other things. It just automatically changes. So this is like giving you lots of interesting information uh, about it. Are there already projects making Treesitter talk to LSP? I don't know why they would need to talk to each other. What would they tell each other? Well, one, they're not sentient, so it seems a little weird to ask if they're talking, but you know what I mean. When's Pinesitter coming out? Next release, obviously. Um, awesome Envin plugins, Treesitter document. Yeah, like in React and other languages, this is very important. Semantic highlights of imports using type information from LSP. Well, you would just ask that from LSP if it has the info. Uh, yes, the tree sitter binary doesn't matter for running inside of NeoVim. We ship with something inside to do it. Is there any sort of benefit of using tree sitter while being tree sitter? Oh, right. Do you, does it go faster if you're literally sitting in a tree? I haven't done the test yet. I haven't done the test yet. If you're going to be with non-programming language, it's very difficult with non-programming languages. Markdown, it's very difficult, actually. Surprisingly difficult. Um... Someday someone will figure out and it'll be cool. All right, do we have any other questions about this? Otherwise we should, uh, we should move on. Uh, unless there was something else that I can think of that's really cool with uh, tree sitter. Um, moving, oh yeah, this one's cool. Incremental selection. So this incrementally selects more and more things. So if you're inside of like this, oh, I should probably get rid of all these errors so this actually works. All right, if you're inside of here, you can actually incrementally select using TreeSitter. It asks basically what the next nodes are. So that one's another cool one that I think is, is pretty powerful. Context print is another very cool one. Yeah, you guys can check that out. <clears throat> okay, that's uh, there's, there's stuff on NeoVim's page for, um, is incremental selection part of TreeSitter by default? It's uh, in NVIM TreeSitter, I think, the companion plugin. TreeSitter, just the thing that manages the tree and does, it does the highlighting thing, and so it's not, it doesn't necessarily handle all those other things. 